ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونتوب اليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله واشهد ان سيدنا محمد عبده ورسوله رحمة للعالمين All praise and thanks is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We thank him and we seek his guidance and forgiveness We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save us from the evil of our own deeds and the mistakes that we make every day Whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides to Islam no one can misguide them and whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses to close their eyes and ears and heart to the truth no one can guide them and I bear witness and testify that there is no God except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his final prophet and messenger a mercy to the world. My dear brothers of Bendigo, it's an honor to be standing here today for one simple reason, is that we can see what is happening in the world to our brothers and sisters every single day. We have been witnessing for more than 365 days and for more than 70 years before that the oppression of the Palestinian people. We are now seeing the oppression and the mass incarceration and the erasure of culture of the Uyghur people. We have got brothers and sisters in Europe, in Africa, in North and South America, in Australia being treated with injustice. And it's fair to say we are taking losses. As an ummah, we are taking losses. And every single one of us feels those losses every time you turn on your television. Every time you look at your mobile phone. Every time you look at a newspaper. Every time you look at a radio. We are taking losses. And we are forced to watch as our brothers and sisters are murdered, are kidnapped, are tortured, are raped, are blown into pieces. Even subhanAllah, I had a video arrive on my phone overnight while I was asleep just last night from a friend in Gaza. He sent to me a video of an airplane dropping aid cargo with parachutes, dropping big giant boxes with parachutes. I received the message. I said, is this aid? Is this good news? My friend replied to me and said, yes, this is aid. But this airplane that's dropping aid, these aid boxes landed on tents of refugees and killed them all. So why am I proud to stand here today? Because the Muslims of Bendigo are putting at least one win on the scoreboard for Islam are putting at least one win on the scoreboard of La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. All of our brothers and sisters everywhere in the world have got their jihad. And there are various types of jihad and struggle for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All the way from the mother raising her children to the father going to work and all the way to the battlefields. And here in Bendigo, in Bendigo there was a monumentous jihad with court cases and protests and news and articles and documentaries and a fear-mongering campaign. And the enemies of Islam spent their money and flew themselves from Sydney and Melbourne, from America and from the United Kingdom to come here and say, there will be no masjid in Bendigo. We oppose the masjid in Bendigo. We will not allow you to build a masjid in Bendigo. We will not allow you to Islamify Bendigo. Is that true or not? But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He sent all of you as his soldiers in this city. Not soldiers to use guns and violence, but soldiers to spread the message of Islam, which is the message of peace, which is the message of contentment in the heart, which is the message of having a unique, genuine and real relationship with the one who created you. And it's not something that we hoard only for ourselves. It's something that it's our duty to give to the whole world. You, the Muslims of Bendigo, by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, have been fighting this battle. And the brothers here tonight that have come from Melbourne, 
and the brothers that have come from Sydney and everyone who has been participating in this cause and even through internet and crowdfunding, people who have donated from overseas to see the message of, Men of Bendigo get built. I'm here with my brother Mustafa and we just came from Bendigo Masjid now. We just had a tour of Bendigo Masjid. And I tell you, for that 15, 20 minutes, I could not stop smiling. And I did not think, just for 20 minutes, I had a break. I did not think about the carnage that we are seeing every day. Wallahi, this city and every city like it, because Bendigo is not unique. There are places all over the world where there is no masjid, there is no Islamic presence, and the Muslims are shy and hide their Islam just to fly under the radar and just to get along with everyone and just to smile and do their salah at home. May Allah bless them and reward them for doing their salah, but Islam requires for us to care enough about every human being out there that we invite them to Islam. We invite them to Jannah. Because Jannah is not just for us, nor is it suitable or appropriate for us to force people away from Jannah or to hide Jannah from them. Who are we to not share Islam with the world? Don't we have an ounce of compassion for the brother and sister out here who is not Muslim, who has heard nothing of Islam, who does not love Islam and does not hate Islam. And if you spend five minutes talking to them about the concept of La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, they might just say to you, that sounds really good. How do I join? How do I sign up? Wallahi, stranger things have happened. At breakfast this morning, we talked about people that have said shahada after a five-minute conversation. We talked about people that have said shahada after a ten-minute conversation. Imagine if nobody had the guts to have that five-minute conversation with them. Imagine if everybody was happy to be clean-shaven, not mention to anyone you know that you're Muslim, not mention to anyone you know that you're praying, not mention to anyone you know that you're fasting, and just fly under the radar. But isn't that the most selfish thing that you can do? And isn't that more heartless than what the Jews are doing to the Palestinians? How dare you keep Islam all to yourself? When you have the keys to Jannah in your hand, how dare you not share them with your neighbor on the left and the right? And even if one of them says, you know, you make a lot of sense, I want to become a Muslim, and one of them says, don't ever speak to me again, you will get your hasanat from both. You will get your reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from conveying the message to him and from conveying the message to him. The one that embraces you as a brother or sister, you will get the hasanat. And the one that spits in your eye, you will get the hasanat. You cannot lose when you do business with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How can you lose? What can you lose? Will they take your job? Who controls the jobs? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Will they make life difficult for you? Who can make your life easy? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What are they going to do to you? Wallahi, there is nothing they can do. I have to remind myself and all of you that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam cared very deeply about spreading the message of Islam. That might sound like a stupid thing for me to say, but just think about it. Many of us these days are focused on dawah within our community, which is a good thing. Lessons for the youth, which is a good thing. Adult classes, which is a good thing. These are all good things and they should all continue. But what about the dawah to the non-Muslim? The dawah to the non-Muslim who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes as someone wandering in the dark. They might go left for two steps. They might go right for two steps. They might go forward. They might go backward. They don't know which way they are headed. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent prophets and messengers 1400 years ago. But he sent you and me today. Who is the prophet and the messenger that's going to come to Bendigo and start doing dawah here? Who? Who are the angels that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to send from above the heavens to do dawah here? Who? Wallahi, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent you. Don't look to your left and don't look to your right. The responsibility is yours. And mashallah, 
I'm proud of every single Muslim in Bendigo for the journey that you have been on to build this masjid. And mashallah, it's an amazing masjid. And inshallah, bi ta'ala, when it's finished, I will come and pray with you side by side in that masjid. We have an obligation to share the gift of Islam. I will end with this Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa He cared so much about wanting the non-Muslims to accept Islam that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually had to tell him to calm down. Did you know that? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually, actually had to remind him to take it easy on himself. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an, لَعَلَّكَ بَاخِعُ نَفْسَكَ أَن لَا يَكُونُوا مُؤْمِنِينَ O oh Muhammad, it might be that you will hurt yourself or it might be that you will injure yourself or it might be that you will kill yourself out of worry, out of stress because they don't want to become Muslim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues to say, In nasha, If we wished, we would send down a sign to them from the heavens. That would make every single one of them fall down into sujood in prostration and say, La ilaha illallah. So what's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Oh Muhammad, you are so stressed out that they don't want to accept Islam. It's worrying you so much that you might cause yourself harm from this stress and this worry. Don't forget, Oh Muhammad, that if we wished, we could send down a sign to them from the heavens and all of them would bow their necks immediately knowing that there is la ilaha illallah. Don't forget the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to open the hearts to Islam. Your job is to deliver the message. Your job is to deliver the message. Your job is to deliver the message. And you might say, but brother Ahmad, I don't know what to say. I'm not the best speaker. I don't always have the right words. What can I do? What should I do? My brothers and sisters, your job is very easy. You don't have to convince anyone of anything. Don't try to convince anyone. When it's time for you to pray, say, oh, excuse me, I have to go pray. I'm a Muslim. We pray five times a day. I'm going to pray. I'll, I'll be back. Go and pray. This is Dawah. They invite you to the, to the team lunch. Say, oh, sorry, guys. I'm fasting for 30 days for Ramadan. We fast one month out of the year. We don't eat or drink, but thank you for the invitation. This is Dawah. I'm going to take annual leave because I'm going to Mecca. Don't just say I'm going on a holiday. Say I'm going to Mecca. I'm going to a place that was built by Prophet Abraham. You know Prophet Abraham in your Bible? He built it. And stop talking. And inevitably, 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 they will ask you to explain. Oh, you pray. What does that mean? How does that look? Is that, what, what is that like? Is, can I see? You fast, what does that mean? What about water? Can you drink water? They will ask questions. Mecca, why do you have to go to Mecca? Can't you do the pilgrimage in Melbourne? It's much closer. Go and do tawaf in Melbourne and come back. Save yourself the airfare. They will ask questions. You will have a conversation. And you don't have to convince them that salah is a good idea. Or siyam is a good idea. Or hajj is a good idea. Or zakat is a good idea. Just convince them. La ilaha illallah. There is one God. He made us, we worship him, we obey him. That's all. Then questions will come. And do your best. And if you struggle, there are resources for you online, on YouTube. There are mashayikh, there are people that can help you. Seek the help. Connect them together. Even if you're not doing the talking, find someone that can talk after you've done some groundwork. At the end of the day, what's the worst that can happen? Brothers, what's the worst that can happen? What's the worst that can happen? They don't want to talk to you anymore? That's it. This is what we're afraid of. Our Palestinian brothers and sisters are being shredded. But we're afraid to talk about Islam because oh, he might not like me anymore. She might not talk to me anymore. Wallahi. You have already been brave for many years in the fight for this masjid. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent you soldiers from places you could never expect. Even non-Muslims came to your aid and to your support. And Muslims from all over the world have donated and will continue to do so by the will of Allah. Put Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first. Care about da'wah as Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam cared about da'wah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never let you fail. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum. Fa astaghfiruhu innahu wal ghafoorul rahim wal barru al-kareem.